Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with last night's Monday Night Raw broadcast live on the USA Network from the Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. The main event saw the return of Nikki Cross, who interfered to help Bailey defeat Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair in a non-title match. Cross, who was no longer using her Nikki A.S.H. superhero persona, then attacked Bailey as well to close out the show. What the hell just happened? Uh, there are so many questions yet to be answered, but wait, I think coming he's again. Back. What the hell's Nikki oh. want with Bailey now? Well, it seems to me like the masquerade is over. This is a side of Nikki we haven't seen in a long, long time, Kevin. The run-in marked Cross's first TV appearance in a month. In an earlier segment, Bailey and her damage control partners EO Sky and Dakota Kai had jumped Bel Air's ally Candice LeRae during a backstage interview segment. In the opening match of the night, Finn Balor of Judgment Day pinned Carl Anderson of the OC following outside interference from Judgment Day's Rhea Ripley. Attempting to neutralize the interference, Anderson's partner Doc Gallows was body slammed outside the ring by Ripley. Oh, it's a big boot to the face of Damian Priest. Yes. Oh, wait a second. Yes. Ripley. Gallows into the post. Rhea Ripley's coming. Oh, my God. Gallows. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This fellow's a chicken breast giant, 300 pounds. Just witnessed. The growing feud between Seth Rollins and Mustafa Ali continued, with Rollins costing Ali his match against Austin Theory. Afterward, the two men brawled around the ring and on the stage. In other results, Baron Corbin pinned Johnny Gargano due to outside interference from JBL, R Truth pinned The Miz due to a ringside distraction from Gargano, and Elias pinned Chad Gable. Gable and his Alpha Academy partner Otis double-teamed Elias after the match until Matt Riddle made the save. Last night's show marked Paul Levesque's return to TV after clearing WWE's COVID-19 protocols. Levesque missed last week's Raw and SmackDown due to a positive COVID-19 diagnosis. With some more WWE news, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. WWE is bringing a premium live event to Montreal for the first time in 13 years, according to an official announcement made yesterday. WWE Elimination Chamber will take place Saturday, February 18th from the Bell Center, the second of two consecutive nights in the building, following the go-home edition of SmackDown, also scheduled to take place there the day before. The last WWE Premium Live event held there was a 2009 edition of WWE Breakdown on pay-per-view, main evented by CM Punk successfully defending the World Heavyweight title against The Undertaker in a submission match. Bray Wyatt is currently listed internally by WWE as the lead babyface on the SmackDown brand, according to a report yesterday from PW Insider. The company is reportedly very pleased with the response to Wyatt's recent return to TV, especially in terms of merchandise sales, with Wyatt leading the pack in that category company-wide. Plans are currently in the works to develop even more merchandise, based on Wyatt and the other Firefly Funhouse characters. Drew McIntyre, who had been previously slotted as SmackDown's number one babyface, is now listed at number two. For the Wrestling News, I'm Lou Kippelman. In ratings news, last Friday night's WWE SmackDown on Fox from Toledo, Ohio, drew an average of 2.231 million viewers, holding relatively steady with the previous week's 2.274 million, according to Showbuzz Daily. Numbers in the key 18-49 to demographic were down slightly, coming in at 0.52 as opposed to the previous week's .54, according to Russell Nomics. Friday night's key demo rating represents 678,000 viewers and put SmackDown in the number one spot for the demo on network TV for the 15th week in a row. The show ranked number seven in overall viewership for the night for the fourth week in a row, 
Total viewership was also almost even with the same week in 2021, although the key demo rating was down 10.34%. Post-wrestling reports in Canada, SmackDown averaged 168,300 viewers and 60,300 in the 25- to 54-year-old demographic on Rogers Sportsnet 360. Meanwhile, a live edition of AEW Rampage, which aired later in the evening on TNT from Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida, got a small bump in overall viewership, combined with a much larger drop in the key demographic, according to Showbuzz Daily. The episode brought in an average of 480,000 viewers, up 4.8% from the previous week's 458,000 viewers, but the .13 rating in the key demo represented a 23.52% drop on the previous week's .17, according to WrestleNomics. That's a loss of 52,000 viewers. The episode also fell to number 24 in the demo on cable TV for the evening, down from number 9 for the taped episode the week before. Both SmackDown and Rampage faced tough sports competition for the evening, with the National League Championship Series game between the Phillies and the Padres on FS1, drawing a 1.12 key demo rating, and two basketball games on ESPN. In independent wrestling news, Fight TV's premium platform Fight Plus is set to expand its pro wrestling offerings, with several major independent promotions having signed up to air on the streaming platform. That's according to a Fightful report. While no specific promotions were mentioned by name, a detailed announcement is expected in November, which will also include specific packages and prices. Fight TV currently streams shows for MCW, the NWA, GCW, House of Glory, and Defy Wrestling. It also presents Impact pay-per-views and is the home of AEW in many international markets outside the United States. With some injury news, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. The Laredo Kid underwent emergency surgery yesterday morning in Monterey, Mexico, due to what appeared to be an injury to the midsection, suffered Sunday during a match with AAA Mega Champion El Hijo del Vikingo. According to a post that AAA and Impact Wrestler made to his Instagram account, Laredo defeated Vikingo in the finals of the AAA Show Center Tournament, after which he was taken to a nearby hospital. It was his second match of the night, following his earlier defeat of Viano 5 Jr. and Toscano in a three-way match to determine Vikingo's opponent. Although Laredo Kid did not specify the exact nature of his injury, he did indicate he may be out of action for a while. He had been scheduled to compete at AAA's next show in the United States, a December 3rd event in Tempe, Arizona, but it is not known if he will be able to fulfill that commitment. For the Wrestling News, I'm Lou Kippelman. And we have an update on that story this morning. According to Lucha Reporter Cubs fan of LuchaBlog.com, wrestler Mamba made a YouTube video after speaking to Laredo Kid. Mamba said Laredo underwent surgery for a rupture in his small intestine, is, quote, doing okay, and he's going to remain in the hospital for a few days to make sure the surgery went as expected, unquote. Cubs fan also noted in a tweet that Mamba relayed that Laredo Kid has, quote, been told he can't do anything for at least two months, and he can only start working out after that. This shouldn't affect him long term, but he's going to have to take a break from wrestling for a while, unquote. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, Follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The Wrestling News can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the Wrestling News across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.